Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for compliance between the executive and legislative authorities to be the, cri the criterion for organizing the restructuring of support to beneficiaries and for it to be developed with the participation of the National Audit Office, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, stated that after consulting and cooperating with the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, it was decided that a joint legislative committee will be formed, which includes all the office's members of the Shura and Representative Councils. The committee is to be chaired by the first Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ali Abdullah Al Aradi. Coordination meetings will be held with the Executive Authority with the aim to establish a proper mechanism for redirecting support to beneficiaries with the participation of the National Audit Office. Al Mullah voiced his trust in the members of the Shura and Representatives Councils to achieve the aspirations of the people of Bahrain and to coordinate with the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that the Joint Committee will contact all members to provide them with the proposals and suggestions which will refine the process of redirecting support to beneficiaries through uniting the legislative and organizational aspects to implement the work plan of the government for the years 2015 to 2018. Al Mullah expressed appreciation to Al Saleh for the provision of supporting teams for the committee from the General Secretariat of the Shura and Representatives Councils with legal and economic expertise and full administrative support. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, chaired the council's weekly meeting today in which it approved the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee report on a draft law amending Article 47 of Decree by Law 39 of 2002 on the general budget. The council also approved a proposal and on encouraging and protecting investment and referred it to the government. The council approved the report of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee on a draft law amending the agreement of air services between Bahraini and the Tunisian governments on mutual administrative assistance. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein Ali Mirza, participated in the opening of the 8th session of the General Assembly of the International Renewable Energy Agency, which was held in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, as part of the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. The minister gave a speech explaining the kingdom's strategy for energy sustainability and finding suitable renewable energy options available in Bahrain, most, not most notably solar energy and wind power. The minister referred to the main decisions adopted by the cabinet to support solar energy opportunities within the National Renewable Energy Plan and develop concrete programs to accelerate the contribution of renewable energy to the kingdom's energy resources to ensure a safe and sustainable future for the country's energy. The Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week brings together more than 85 world leaders, ministers and officials from more than 150 countries. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Heba Abd Ghafar. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,319.41 points, marking an increase of 2.52 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment and services sectors, and investors mainly traded in the commercial bank sector, representing 45% of the total value of traded shares. 59 equity transactions took place, including 3,870,255 shares, worth 458,112.
Bahrain will host the second Middle East Refining Technology Conference and Exhibition under the patronage of Oil Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa on January 23rd, organized by the World Refining Association in cooperation and coordination with the National Oil and Gas Authority and sponsored by a number of international oil companies. MADTEC will attract experts, leaders of famous refining companies and refining technology academics and researchers. Oil Minister praised the World Refining Association's choice of Bahrain to host the second edition of MERTEC thanks to the Kingdom's good reputation in the conferences industry, as well as the outstanding success of the first edition also held in Bahrain in 2017. Bahrain has ranked second globally and first in the MENA region in the fifth edition of the Islamic Finance Development Report and Indicator. This is the fifth consecutive year that Bahrain has retained its second place following Malaysia in first position. Executive Director of Banking Supervision and the Central Bank of Bahrain, Khalid Hamad, said that investments made in technology are making a tangible impact, unlocking innovation and entrepreneurship. With the huge potential in the connection between technology and Islamic finance, the report also noted that Bahrain is making great strides through promotion of Islamic finance, education and literacy. Bahrain's Islamic regulatory environment, where the kingdom was placed first globally in overall regulations and in Sharia governance, was also praised. Minister of Housing, His Excellency, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub al Hamar, said that the government has spent a total of 490 million Bahraini dinars to support the housing allowance over the past 10 years. The Minister of Housing explained that the housing file had been a witness since the beginning of his career in the early 60s of the last century on the support and care of the leadership and honorable government, which resulted in the provision of more than 130,000 housing services for citizens worth more than 4 billion Bahraini dinars. He pointed out that the gains made in the housing file since the beginning of the decade in terms of building and implementing thousands of housing units and distributing the largest number of citizens listed on the waiting lists confirmed the government's orientation to channel support to the citizen.